Very. I must object to these kind of histrionics. I had nothing to do with that, Mr. Markley. When I see a story like this, move over the wires, Mr. Barry, because I'm not so naive as to believe the plaintiff's attorney had nothing to do with this. Well, then what's your proposal, Mr. Markley? $1,500 for each girl. $1,500? That's <laughs> not even a year's wages. We think it's a very generous offer, so in your case, wants to buy the statute of limitations. This is a case in equity, sir. The Chancery Court will come to a different conclusion. Yeah, and the Chancery Court can't rewrite the law. And the law is clear. Two years from the date of injury, your clients are out of time. Two years from the date the cause of injury is discovered. Oh, very creative, Mr. Barry. Very clever. I got to admire your imagination. But you got a long way to go before you can convince the judge. And in the meantime, Mr. Markley, the press will continue to take a great interest in the story and in the company's complete indifference to its workers. No doubt it proved the good press for the Consumers League. And you accuse us of exploiting these girls. You're the one hiding behind the statute of limitations. Hiding? Ms. Wiley? You know very well the law never anticipated a situation like this. These girls were dying years before anyone knew the cause. Before anyone knew the cause, Ms. Wiley. Does that include the U.S. Radium Corporation? <laughs> Mr. Barry, I hope that's your opening defense, because you will have made our case. I'll see you guys in court. Arrogance of that man. Tell me again the purpose of these articles, Ms. Wally. Public sympathy, Mr. Barry. That's the engine of reform. You're antagonizing the company. Then the strategy is working. And what about the girls? How does it help them to read in a dozen different newspapers that they have so little time to live? Mr. Barry, surely you can see. The U.S. Radium Corporation cares nothing about the girls it is poisoned. But the average housewife in Orange cares very deeply. And so do millions of other women across the country. These women shop. They buy watches. Markley can be as smug as he likes, but the Consumers League campaign will only lead to one outcome. And he knows it. That is why he was here today. I only hope you're right, Miss Wally. Public sympathy, Mr. Barry. Wait and see. I'm so sorry. It seems as if in this time of advancement, the well-being of the average worker is overlooked. I'm only to share with you girls the key to my good health at the age of 92. I call it Christian Science. Catherine, look at this letter. You all right, Catherine? Lean again. Shall I get the nurse? They did this before. It'll stop. Don't you need to sleep? Who can sleep? I never sleep. Well, you'll sleep tomorrow. Yeah, you might not wake up. Of course you'll wake up. Not if it don't go so well. Sometimes you don't come out of it so good. My mother's cousin, she went into the hospital for her appendix, and she didn't come home again. Well, you just can't think that way, that's all. Uh, Miss Wiley said folks would be on her side, and she sure was right. Uh, here's one from... What if we don't win? Uh, of course we'll win. But what if we don't? My father will lose his house. We'll be on the street. You'll be on the street, too. You and Tom, you will never get married, Grace. How can you stand it? Catherine, please! How can Tom stand it? Don't you ever wonder? I don't never hear him complain. Catherine, once the judge hears our testimony, he's going to rule for us. All it'll take is one look at us. It'll be over in a day. Think so? Sure. 
We'd be awful hard to ignore with a state wearing, don't you think? <laughs> That'll be something then, won't it? See Mr. Reader's face when we get on the stand? No. You want to read another letter? They didn't have no vanilla, so I got you some chocolate. Took you long enough. Hey, don't get on me. I had six people stop me on the way here, and all of them were reporters, and all of them were asking after you. Waiting for me to die. No one is waiting for you to die. It's true. One of them called my mother asking if I had died, and when she said no, they sounded disappointed. Have some of this. You'll feel better. Evening, girls. How about a picture? For the love of Mike, what are you doing? We need some pictures for the graphics exclusive on the girls. Exclusive? What are you talking about? $5,000. That's what. What do you say, Grace? That sound good to you? Think you could use $5,000? I don't... I don't understand. Perhaps you're familiar with Benar McFadden. Who? That, uh, faith healer? Herbalist, Mr. Creator, herbalist. Benar McFadden's patent herbal therapy is just what these girls need to get back on their feet. And the graphic will pay for it all. All we ask is for the exclusive rights on the story from here on out. See for yourself. You want to pay them to talk to that Benar McFadden guy? Easy money, huh? Let me see. I, I think they're serious, Grace. The graphic always does physics on the up and up. I don't know. Grace, what does your dad owe on the house? I don't know exactly. And that last medical bill, that had to have been at least a couple hundred. At least. All I'm saying is we should think about this. Then all we have to do is talk to this herbalist fella. Of course, we have to get our money's worth. A regular series of features with pictures following the course of the treatment, your illness, recovery, or otherwise, depending on how it goes. And then you print whatever you want. Maybe you ask in color. Everybody asks in color. It don't seem so bad. Maybe we should talk to Miss Wiley about it. Miss Wiley? What's it to her? You're the one with the bills to pay. It wouldn't be right to do something like this without talking to Miss Wiley. You're a big girl, Grace. Can't you make your own decisions? Of course I can make my own decisions. You'd take it if the company gave it to you. The company owes us a lot more than that. If you ever see it. Grace, maybe we should do it. I just don't feel right. You're going to talk to those reporters anyhow. Might as well get something out of it. He's right, you know. Why give your story away when people are crazy to read about it? Believe me, you girls could cash in big. The day you ran the feature on you, bang, sold out every copy in every newsstand. Everybody can sympathize with the plight of some poor sick girl facing certain death with no fulfillment in motherhood. I'd like you to go now. My friend is very sick. She needs her rest. Grace, at least think about it. Sure, think it over. I understand. You're worried about what people will say. But hey, you gotta think about your own decisions here. There's no reason you shouldn't get something out of all this. Everyone's out to get what they can, for sure. Why should you just sit back and keep your nose clean when everyone el else is up to their elbows in it? Gentlemen, I have treated a number of the girls who claim they got sick here. One of them, her jaw had rotted so bad, I could remove it simply by lifting the bone out of her mouth, oh. as you can see here. <coughs> Thank you, Dr. Neff. You can put that away now. Well, then, maybe you would rather look at it on the x-rays. This was an expensive case to treat, you know. I never did get compensated. The girl died, her family never paid. I sympathize, Dr. Neff, but what does that have to do with us? Here it is straight. There's going to be a lot more girls coming out and saying they got sick here. So I was thinking, maybe we could do a little bit, you know, a little I scratch your back, you scratch mine type of thing. I don't follow you. Suppose you was to give me a list of the girls who worked here. I'd see to it there weren't no more lawsuits. You think you could cure them? No, I, I couldn't put out a cure. I'm saying, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. 
How so, Dr. Neff? Well, I would examine the girls for radium necrosis and come up with a favorable diagnosis. Pyorrhea, say, or something else. Um, quite a few of the cases will just die off anyways, and the rest we can put off till the statute of limitations kicks in and it's too late to sue. You're going to persuade them they haven't got a case against the company. Exactly. And if they do decide to sue, I could testify against them in court. It would be strong testimony coming from the doctor who treated them. What makes you so sure that these girls will come to see you? Well, they'll come to me quick if I don't charge them nothing. Because we'd be paying you. Exactly right. Uh, we understand each other, Mr. Reed. What exactly are you asking for here, Dr. Neff? I would need $10,000 for every girl I've seen so far, and $2 for here on out. I would also need expenses covered for the x-rays and the materials. I'm thinking a gentleman's agreement here. Better off if it's not in writing. No. Okay, we can put it in writing. Uh, we will do nothing of the sort, Dr. Flynn. Your proposal is immoral, and I will have nothing to do with it. Immoral? Well, Mr. Reader, you're a fine one to be talking about morals. Mr. Lee? Uh, when you got your own hired guns ready to tell Those are expert witnesses. Expert witnesses? Paid lackeys is more like it. And none of them's got the dirt I got. You know, if you've got anything up in there, you'll play ball with me. God knows there's plenty of other folks out there who'd be willing to pay good money for this info I got. You're threatening me? Not a threat, Mr. Reader. Just a business proposition. Mr. Lee, see Dr. Neff to the door. Uh, all right, all right, I got it. You guys don't want to play ball. Fine. Uh, says a lot about you folk as businessmen, but so be it. Uh, but believe me, when all this shakes out, it won't be me holding the short end of the stick. Gentlemen, I want you all to make statements on what just occurred here today. We'll send them to the State Dentist Society. Then Dr. Neff will see exactly who's playing ball and who isn't. What an excellent idea. I don't know. Perhaps we shouldn't dismiss Neff's proposal. What do you mean? We're in a very bad situation here, Mr. Reader. That's true. Mr. Lee even says you're having trouble getting girls to work here. Yes, and we've lost some contracts because of it. It's only going to get worse. The papers are full of stories about those girls. Making them out to be saints. And what defense can we put out? except that we'll try our case in court. And in the court of public opinion, we've already lost. Well, maybe we should reconsider. It most certainly wouldn't hurt to have a testimony from the, the dentist who treated those girls. Neff could be very helpful to us. We should retain him. Retain him as what, an extortionist? As an expert. Like Dr. Flynn? Dr. Flynn is a highly respected professor at Columbia University. Neff is a neighborhood dentist. But Dr. Flynn treated some of those girls, didn't he? He didn't treat them. He consulted with them. He dispensed medical advice, Arthur. It wasn't medical advice, though, was it, Charlie? It was an expert's opinion, a scientific opinion. How about this? We retain Neff, but we don't put him on the stand, just so we keep him from testifying for the woman. Now, that's the most important part here. Yes, I agree with him. That is the most important part. Would you agree to something like that, Mr. Reader? Mr. Reader? Mr. Reader? Edward, we can't possibly do this. We can't get into bed with a man like Neff. Arthur's right. We don't want to do business with Neff. Neff could hurt us. We have to take steps. Neff's already given us everything we need. New evidence, gentlemen. This is grounds for postponement. 